A lot of people want to run for office in Colorado. Here's what it takes to actually get on the ballot from the Colorado Sun dot com. Candidates may start gathering petition signatures in mid-January. If they go the caucus and assembly route, they must start gathering support ahead of March. The 22 election is 11 months away, and a wave of candidates are filing paperwork to run in Colorado's newly reconfigured congressional and legislative districts. But jumping into a race doesn't guarantee someone a spot on the ballot for the June 28th primary, let alone the November 8th general election. Candidates Candidates have to spend big money to qualify for the contest or they could try to pick up enough support from members of their political party through what's called the caucus and assembly process. The mad dash to make the ballot starts in January with the primary ballot ballot set by April 29th. Here's how the process works for Democratic and Republican candidates. Candidates must meet certain qualifications. The Federal and state governments set qualifications for candidates to run for elected office. First off, candidates must be affiliated with a political party on January 1st, 2022 to seek the Republican or Democratic nomination to run for U.S. Senate. U.S. Uh, U.S. Senate candidates must be 30 years of age, be a U.S. citizen, be a resident of the state at the time of the election to run for U.S. House. Candidates must be at least 25, be a U.S. citizen for at least seven years for nine years for a Senate and live in the state they represent. They're not necessarily in the congressional district where they're running. Wait, what? Anyone running for office in Colorado must be a U.S. citizen, but that's not the only requirement to run for governor or lieutenant governor. Candidates must be at least 30 years of age and be a Colorado resident for at least two years. To run for treasurer, secretary of state, or attorney general, candidates must be at least 25 years of age and be a Colorado resident for at least two years to run for a state house or Senate. Candidates must be at least 25 years old, live in Colorado in the district they're seeking to represent for at least one year. To run for University of Colorado Regent, State Board of Education, or District Attorney, district attorney candidates must be at least 18 years old, be a Colorado resident, and live in the district they're running in unless they're running for a statewide at-large seat. The caucus and assembly process is considered the traditional grassroots method of getting on the ballot. It's also the least predictable route to getting elected. Candidates must cultivate support among party members who show up to precinct caucuses where a handful of people, sometimes only two or three, gather to throw their support behind someone and elect delegates. Those delegates move on to county, district, and state assemblies where they help form party platforms and nominate candidates for everything from county offices to the U.S. Senate. Only voters registered as Republicans or Democrats by February 7 may attend precinct caucuses, which must be held between March 1st and 5th. Typically, the caucuses and subsequent assemblies draw mostly party activists. That's because it takes dedication and a good deal of time to participate. To make the ba ballot through the caucus and assembly, candidates must get at least 30% of the delegate vote at each step. This limits the number of candidates who may emerge from an assembly to three, though it's typically fewer. For example, in the 2018 gubernatorial caucus and assembly process, Democrats nominated Kerry Kennedy, Kennedy and then U.S. Rep. Jared Polis, while Republicans nominated Stapleton and Lopez. But those four people were far from the only candidates seeking to be on the primary ballot that year. The caucus and assembly process can be somewhat unpredictable because delegates may switch their support from one candidate to another at the last minute. The 2016 Republican primary for U.S. Senate is a prime example where then El Paso County Commissioner Daryl Glenn surprised many political observers by wooing party activists at the last minute and making the ballot in the process. He denied others a chance at winning the GOP nomination, the petition process. Candidates may also petition to get on the ballot by gathering signatures. They're reviewed and confirmed by the Secretary of State's office. January 18th is the first day Democratic or Republican candidates can start gathering signatures, and they must be submitted by March 15th. The signature gathering rules are somewhat complicated, and going the petition route can be expensive tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars expensive, especially for statewide candidates who hire private firms to do the work. 
The requirements are U.S. Senate candidates have to get 1,500 valid signatures from voters in each of Colorado's eight congressional districts. U.S. House State Board of Education CU Regent candidates must collect whichever is less 1,500 signatures or 10% of the votes cast in the last primary election or general election if there was no primary held in the district. Secretary of State, Treasurer, and Attorney General candidates must collect 1,000 signatures from each of the state's eight congressional districts. That's at least 8,000 signatures. State, House, and Senate candidates must collect whichever is less. 1,000 signatures or 30% of the votes cast in the last primary election or general election if there's no primary held in the district. Candidates running for at-large University of Colorado Regent seats must collect 500 signatures from each of the state's eight congressional districts for a total of 4,000 signatures. There's often a race to submit signatures to the Secretary of State's office because once a voter has been counted on one candidate's petition, they can't be counted for another one running for the same office. Problems can also arise with the signature gathering process. 2018 Stapleton paid for a firm. Da, 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 da. Campaign finance records don't indicate. Let's see. Phil Weiser spent $175,000 to make the ballot in 2018, and then Republican candidate for treasurer Polly Lawrence spilt, spent $128,000. The congressional candidate so far. More than 50 people have filed to run for the state's U.S. Senate seat and eight U.S. House seats are up for grabs. Here's a list of candidates with information about each one of them. So let's see. For the first congressional district, there's Diana DeGette, Neil Walia, and Dom Waters. Right? Then you have Joe Negusi. And nobody's running against him in the third congressional district. You got Don Corum, Lauren Bobert, Sol Sandoval, Don Valdez, Colin Wilhelm, Deborah Burnett, Kelly Rhodes, Marina, Marina Zimmerman, Kristen Skoronsky, Root Rutledge, and Don Coram. Dom Waters and Don Coram from Montrose and Scott Yates and Scott Yates. The 4th Congressional District, Ken Buck, Ike McCorkle, oh, Ike McCorkle, and then Ryan McGonagall, Brandon Mi Miaga, Brandon Mi Miaga, Doug Lamborn. Michael Christopher Columbe, Rebecca Kelty, Jeremy Dow, Marcus Murphy, Ryan Thompson, David Goinagatores, and Alex Jones. Christopher Mitchell and David Williams are running in the 5th Congressional District. Along with Orlando Avion, Matthew Feigenbaum. For the 6th Congressional District, you got Jason Crow, Eric Mulder, Rebecca Leatherford, Glenn Rickerson, Brian Smith. In the 7th Congressional District, you got Brittany Pedersen, Laurel Eimer, Kyle Faust, Eric Adland, Julius Mopper, Tom Reichert, Brad Dimps, Dim, Dimspey, and Johnny Humphrey. Oh, no. Johnny Humphrey's running in the 8th Congressional District. It's an open seat. He's from North Glen. But Brad Dempsey, Brad Dempsey is running for the 7th Congressional District. Other people running for the 8th Congressional District. Tyler Alcorn, Yadira Caravio, Jules Gray, Chaz Tedesco, Matthew Payette, Lori Sane, Barbara Kirkmeyer, Jan Kuhlman, Steve Douglas, and Steve Zorn. Running for U.S. Senate, Michael Bennett, Eli Bremer, Peter Yu, Karen Breslin, Gino Campana, 
Ron Hanks, Joe O'Day, Deborah Flora, and Gregory John Moore. And Gregory John Moore. For the statewide offices so far, you got two for Attorney General John Kellner and Phil Weisner. Phil Weiser for the CU Regent District number one. You got Wanda James, Scott Mangino, Johnny Nguyen, Ben Pope, and Jason Robinson. The fourth Regent District, you got Robert Barrington and Frank McNulty. And the fifth CU Regent District, you got Ken Montera. For governor, you got Jared Allrand, Zachariah Burke, Chadwick Bowman, Lori Clark, Jack Dillander, Jeffrey Fry, Heidi Gnoll, Daryl Gibbs, John Gray Ginsburg, Matthew Hart, Greg Lopez, Jason Lopez, Nathaniel Marshall, Danielle Neuschwanger, Jared Polis, William Purdy, William Redmond, Dustin Rorex, Jim Runberg, Kevin Ruskuski, Christopher Salgado, Christopher Tackett, Ralph Tingle, Zachary Varon, Jason Wilcat, and Bradley Wynn. Running for Lieutenant Governor, Diane Primavera, Larry Schneider, Roger Evans. Running for Secretary of State. Pam Anderson, Jenna Griswold, David Winnie, Mike O'Donnell. Running for State Board of Education, District 5, Steve Durnham, Joseph Shelton. For the 6th District, Re Rebecca McClellan from Centennial. Dan Maloit. He's running for State Board of Education at large. Kathy Plomer, running for State Board of Education at large. For the 8th District, Cody LeBlanc and Peggy Propst. For State Treasurer, Lang Sias and Dave Young. And Dave Young. Here's a list of legislative candidates so far. Legislative candidates? What? What is my district? Let's see here. House Representative District Colorado. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the map. <laughs> 